the sisters for your time and your commitment and determination for the one hour of Bible study. And we like to call it the hour of Bible study. So it is my prayer today that what we're going to spend and explore together will bring an insight and give you an opportunity to reflect on your prayer life. Because it's important men who to pray and not to give up. And I thank God for the privilege He's given me and yourself to pray without ceasing. And at all times presenting our requests and all our issues in prayer and supplication. But before we start, May I all invite you from wherever you are for all of us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, we bless you, Lord. We give you praise for the gift of life. We give you praise, Lord, and we are grateful for keeping us safe and well. And we thank you for your warm hand around us, your shadow that protects us. As the word declares, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under his shadow. Oh, thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to abide under your shadow in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for you never given up on us. Even when we have given up on you, you always take care of us. Take all your glory and all your honor. Release your anointing for those who need it in this hour. So they could be free and they could be delivered in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let your anointing also remove every burden and destroy every yoke. And every prayer request made by the saint, oh, let heaven do not go unnoticed. Let heaven pay attention. As the word declares that you pay attention to the prayer of the righteous. We are grateful, Lord, tonight. And we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last week we talked about the prayer of faith. And we look at the, the different areas of the prayer of faith. But today we're going to explore and learn about the prayer of attitude. The prayer of attitude. The prayer of attitude. If you have your notebook and your pen, please write the prayer of attitude. And we're going to dissect that in this teaching today from the look of, book of Luke, chapter 22, from verse 39 to uh, 46. Luke 22, verse 39 to 46. Remember, as the brethren of Berea, they will always check the scripture as they were taught. And I always invite you not to trust what people read, but read with them to ensure that we all are singing on the same hymn sheet. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the things I have to tell you in this year of uh, this year for renewal of divine uh, a covenant, we have to present ourselves, transform, change, reflecting the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, fire still burning on the altar. Covenant is being completed, but be. A fire career and power of God. Wherever you are, let not the fire of God die in you. Let not the power of God weaken. But wherever you go, men and women will see and notice the fire and power of God you are carrying. And we thank God that this year, will be much better than last year as you renew your covenant with our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go to our teaching today in Luke 
chapter 22 from verse 39 to 46. Shall we read loud together? Please check the scripture in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciple also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast and knelt down and prayed. He moved away from a few meters and knelt down and prayed. I want you to understand that the, uh, in the prayer of attitude is the way, the seriousness you put into your prayer, the preparation you make, how you present yourself before the Lord when you enter into the dialogue. So here we understand that the Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, who they call us the Man of Olives, when he went with his disciples, we're going to find out who, who are those disciples, he moved away, he left them and moved away a few yards, he knelt down and prayed. Look at verse 42 saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. What an attitude. Is it praying, not what I want, but what you want. And he moved forward, saying in verse 43, and there appeared an angel unto him, from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer, and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. Remember, when we do not pray, we are exposed to sorrow. We are exposed to loss. We are exposed to sadness. But when we pray, we are strengthened. And the last verse, And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. One of other things, my sisters and brothers, we have to realize is we don't pray, not only sorrow comes or sadness or loss, but we become subject of temptation. And when we have no strength, we are tempted, we can become victim of temptation. So this is this reference tells us more about the attitude, the prayer of attitude. What is your attitude when you want to go and pray? The first thing we understand here, Jesus is teaching us that he knelt down and prayed. We're going to explore that. I may not finish that today, but we should be able, by God's grace, next week to finish uh, all about the prayer of attitude. I should be able to uh, uh, share with you that up to uh, five, and then we have uh, the four other aspects of prayer, of attitude next week. So the key, the key element here in the prayer of attitude is the kneeling down, and you begin the dialogue with God. If we don't pray, we are subject of sorrow. Because 
when there's no prayer, we have no strength. We have no protection. We are left at our own mercy. But when we pray, we are strengthened. Let's look at here in verse, verse 43. There appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Strengthening him in the spirit. Spiritually, he became Jesus Christ, became strengthened. The same thing you and I, when we pray, we are strengthened in the spirit. Now, the first thing we have to understand in our prayer of attitude, because our attitude counts when we are praying. The first thing we have to know in our prayer of attitude is that kneel reverently. When you hear the word reverent is respect with high esteem. The first thing is kneel or kneel reverently. We see that uh, when uh, uh, Solomon is doing the dedication of the temple. Let's look at the Second Chronicle, chapter five. Second Chronicle, chapter five. Is in the book of Second Chronicles, sorry, chapter six. We see Solomon in verse thirteen. We see Solomon here kneeling reverently. So in Second Chronicle chapter six, verse thirteen, the Bible says, "For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court, and upon it he stood and knelt down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel." And spread forth his hand toward heaven. Your attitude of a prayer matter. The way you kneel has to be a reverent kneeling. We have to kneel reverently. And we have to prepare ourselves when we want to pray. We have an extract here, an example of the of a Solomon dedicating the temple. The first thing we understand that he built a brazen scaffold of five cubit long and five cubit broad, then three cubit high, and, and set it in the midst of the court. And upon it he stood and knelt down upon his knee before the congregation. If you have a house whereby you can have your closet room, please by all means do it. If you don't have enough space, but even in your bedroom, prepare a corner whereby where you kneel down before the Lord. And always don't forget to spread your hand toward heaven. Why toward heaven? Because where cometh our help? Our help cometh from the Lord who created heaven and the earth. And you may also remember when Daniel was praying when he was in Sushan, he said he opened the window toward Jerusalem. Why Jerusalem? Because Jerusalem is the city of God. The second thing, kneel continually. Kneel continually. You don't kneel once, you don't kneel twice, but let it become a natural lifestyle. A believer kneel continually. As the Bible tells us, Daniel did it three times a day. 
He knelt in the morning, knelt in the, in the midday, and knelt in the evening. Let's look at it in Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. In Daniel chapter 6 verse 10, the Bible says, it reads, now when Daniel knew that the writing was a, the writing was a sign, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. As he did previously. Will you and I do what Daniel did? Where continually we kneel down, continually we show gratitude, we show respect. It's a mark of respect of your humility. Remember. Humility precedes glory. You want, to be, you want to be glorified by God? You want to be honored by God? Learn to humble yourself. When we humble ourselves, God lifts us up. But when we lift ourselves up before God, God press us down. Number three, kneel worshipingly. Kneel worshipingly. As the psalmist urged, for Jehovah is our maker, we must learn to kneel worshipingly. Let me, let me make a, 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 a stop here. When we are in full worship procession, you don't need anyone or the, 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 the worship leader or the prayer leader to tell you, oh, let them kneel down. Let them prostrate. No, that has to be something which has to be developed within yourself how reverently you present yourself before God. When you kneel before God, it should not be something Called or instructed or uh, uh, something be, being required of us. It has to be natural, prompt within ourselves that I am in the presence of God. I must worship Him in truth and in spirit. Therefore, when I kneel before Him, my kneeling has to be worshiping Him. Remember when we worship is we have left the outer court. We are now entering in the holy of holies where we have an encounter with God. We prostrate. We bow. We know that here is a place whereby only God and I, and I have to show my humility. Because when we worship, when we praise, we praise with our body and with our mind. But when we worship, we worship in spirit. Remember, I said to you, God is seeking for worshippers, those who worship Him in spirit and truth. Worship is done in spirit, not in the mind, not in the body, but in the spirit. So when we enter into the spiritual mode, the body is left behind. The mind is left behind. We are entering as a spirit in the presence of God. That's why when we kneel, 
we must kneel worshiping him. How do we know that? Let's look at Psalms. Psalms 150. Psalm so 115, sorry. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. So when we are in Psalm 115, just bear with me, I want to make sure that I get it right. Is In Psalm 150, uh, Psalm 150, uh, uh, sorry, it really quite clear In Psalm 95, verse 6, it reads, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Oh, glory. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Acquietor, the one who made us in his own heart. Remember, when we are reading Psalm 100, it is tells us quite clear that we are the sheep of your pasture. We are not made by our own hand, but we are made in the hand of God. Let me probably read it so you can understand what I'm talking about. It means, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Knowing that the Lord is God. It is he that made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. And then is telling you. Enter his court with thanksgiving. And into into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with the praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Let's get back to Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us worship him and bow down. 
Let us kneel before the Lord, our creator, our designer, our maker. The one who gave us life. Please notice very well, when we worship, we worship him in the spirit. At that time, the mind and the body is no longer with you. You have now embraced, you are now a spirit being, worshipping God. Dealing down, bowing before him. With praises in your mouth. When we praise, is basically a recognition of who he is and what he has done. When we praise, we celebrate what he has done. But when we worship, we show our gratitude of who he is and what he's doing in our lives. And I pray this will minister to us if every day we begin to know and reflect who is God to us. And when I know that, I must walk in truth. And I must come into his presence as a spirit being. That's the attitude of prayer we need to take in our everyday life. This has to be natural. If you are struggling, God is merciful. Pray that, Lord, let me come before you naturally, praying before you. Let me come as a spirit being to worship you. Worshiping God shouldn't be false. Worshiping God shouldn't be reminded. Worshiping God should be commanded. It has to be natural because that's what. Those who have been created by God, those who believe that God is their maker, that's what they do. Number four, number four of the prayer of attitude, kneel submissively, oh glory, kneel submissively, oh glory. Kneel submissively. When I kneel, I submit myself unto the Lord. This again shows a humility before him. Who am I if it's not you God who made me who I am? Who am I if your breath is not in me? Because once your breath has been removed from me, I become a thinking symbol and I will not last to begin to smell. If I am who I am, I talk the way I talk, I think the way I think, I speak with the confidence, it's because of your breath in me. Therefore, we have to be women and men of gratitude before God. Because if it's not God, when people rise against us, we cannot protect ourselves or cannot, we cannot fight. But because of Him, when men rise or rise against us, they cannot do us harm because we are protected under His shadow. And who are you to go to the shadow of God if God does not permit you? If they couldn't catch you last night when you were sleeping because you were covered by the shadow of God. If when they concocted evil and sent arrows, it didn't reach you because the shadow of the Lord was upon you. And I'm glad to say that because when I sleep, I trust God because he said to me, I never sleep, no slumber. Therefore, somebody go to sleep, and that person is you. Just say to yourself, it's me. You go to sleep. That's the process God has 
made for you to develop, for you to regenerate, for you to rebuild your strength for the next assignment. So when we kneel submissively, as Christ did in the Garden of Gethsemane, remember, we were praying, we were talking about the Garden of Gethsemane here, what we understand is that when he came, he, 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 look at verse uh, 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 42, saying, Father, if that be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. What a submission. He said, nothing for me. Because if I am who I am, it's because of you. And I pray and submit unto you. If you and I, we are who we are today. If you and I are able to read, to breathe, to eat, to walk, to drive, to go shopping, to live and enjoy the fruit of our, la of our labor, it is because of our submission unto you. Because of God's love for us. Because God loves us before the foundation of the world. And he ensure that when we die, when we do his will, he protect us. If his will is a, if his will is a preeminence, whatever you need, God makes sure is made available for you. So Christ now in is showing his submission in verse 41 and in verse 42 by uh, saying. As he was withdrawn from them about stone cast, knelt down and prayed. When you kneel down, it is an attitude of prayer which shows that you are submitting yourself unto God. My brother, don't boast yourself. My sister, don't boast yourself. If it wasn't for God, we wouldn't be here this hour talking about the prayer of attitude. But if we are talking about the prayer of attitude, we have to be grateful. We must submit ourselves unto the Lord when we pray. Because remember, prayer is the empty hand of need. Prayer is the empty hand of need. Prayer is the cry of despair. Prayer is the key to open the ladder of heaven supplies in our lives. The, the key to open the ladders of heaven to our supply. When I pray, it means that I'm limited. My needs are not met. I need God intervention for my need to be met. Therefore, we have to show submission. Number five, and the last one, I'm sure I've read to you the verse to show a submission unto the Lord in verse 41 and 42, which is in Luke chapter 22, Luke chapter 22, verse 41, 42, where he's saying that, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone cast and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, nevertheless. <laughs> nevertheless. Remove this cup from me, nevertheless. Not according to what I want. Not according to what I desire. Not according to what I have for new or pre-planned, but according to what you want. Let your will always take over from my will. Let your will be superior to my will. 
And when we do that, we show a submission unto the Lord. Number five, kneel earnestly. Kneel earnestly. Now, let's go to the book of Mark. The book of Mark. Kneel earnestly. In the kneeling, or in the earnestly kneeling, I would like you, my brothers and sisters, to have an understanding. This has to be a continuous process. We have to seek the Lord earnestly, diligently, all the time. It doesn't have to be specific when we need him, when we are in need, or when we want something from him, then we seek, we seek him. No. Don't be a needing believer, but be a righteous believer. You don't go only to your father when you are in need. You go also to your father to spend time with him and know your father what are his likes and dislikes, what are his standards. You spend time with him. And when we do that endlessly or diligently, we will know the will of our father and we will conform ourselves or align ourselves to his will. So in the prayer of attitude, a kneeling has to be diligently all the time. Not periodically or not seasonal, but continually, earnestly. We should always kneel before the Lord as the leper, the man who had leprosy who came close to Jesus to ask for cleansing. Now look at it in Mark chapter 1 verse 40 and 41. It read, And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him, saying unto him, If thou will, thou canst make me clean. And look at verse 41. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and said unto him, I will be that clean. Now, remember, leprosy was contagious. Once you have leprosy, you become unclean, and they have to move you out of the camp, for you have, you have to be quarantined or be put in quarantine until uh, uh, seven days and the priest has to check on you before you are readmitted into the camp. Therefore, we must understand the power behind Jesus Christ touching someone who has been declared unclean. Because nothing is higher than him. Not even the sickness you and I have. No, it has to bow. So that's why we have to know that when Jesus comes in our life, sickness does not have to stay there. Because our God is able to put a full stop in that sickness. If it was messing you around before, by the time you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you commit yourself to serve him faithfully, seeking him earnestly, the Lord can put either heal you instantly or put a stop in that sickness, and that sickness will never trouble you anymore. Remember when Paul, the apostle, sought God to heal his hunchback. God said, my grace is sufficient to you. And the Bible tells us that hunchback did never trouble him until the very day he left this planet Earth. And I pray whatever sickness troubling you in this hour, whatever pain, whatever discomfort you 
you feeling or you're experiencing, may God put a stop to it in the name of Jesus Christ. And may you find healing in Jesus' name. So, what you have to understand that kneel earnestly as the leopard did when he saw Christ for cleansing stay possible. So, that's what I wanted to share with you today that in our prayer life, we must have an attitude of prayer. We must prepare ourselves. We must kneel reverently. We must kneel continually. We must kneel worshipingly. And we must kneel submissively. And this has to be earnestly. That's it for me today. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and the, 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 the hour of Bible study. And I hope and pray that you have written down all these five elements we have shared, explored together on Luke 22, verse 39 to 46 about the attitude of prayer. And as you continue to do your study, May God help you and may he speak to you personally and give you an assignment so you can also become an evangelist in due season to help others. It's been a great pleasure to spend this time with you. But before I go, I want to give somebody the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You may say, Pastor, I am already born again. I've already given my life unto the Lord. But can I say to you, you can use this opportunity to get somebody to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It doesn't necessarily be me, but what you hear from me and the Apostle Paul said to Timothy, whatever you learn from me, pass it on to others. And as you do so, the kingdom of God will expand and grow through your belief and commitment, perseverance and determination in the body of Christ. Be a kingdom promoter and as you do so, your effort will not go and reward it. But just say this few words loud and clear after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are an eternal son of God. I believe that you died for me and rose again. I believe that you are sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for me. Lord, pray for me, for I am a sinner, that I be forgiven of my sin and be accepted in the bosom of the Father. I pray and declare right now, and I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it. You are born again, but you need to find a local faith-based church where you can go and supply yourself, where the Word of God is taught. The Bible is the only material or the only document divinely inspired to teach you the will or the mind of God. No other things except the word. Because all is in the word. And as you do so, the Lord shall surely be on your side. Remember, you don't have to give up. And can I also remind you again, brothers and sisters, that we need your donation to keep us going and to remain on air. And your donation, you can go to our, 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 our website, you find the bank details there, or you go to uh, uh, some of our preaching where uh, the bank details comes in. Please uh, uh, make a donation so we can continue to do the work of God. And every seed you put is not, you are not giving it away, but you are investing and you are sowing, and in due time you will reap. And when you reap, it will be beyond your expectation. Don't forget, it's not over until God says it's over. God bless you, and I'll see you on Sunday.
Till Thursday. God bless you.